So Pai, I'm Arclight and Red Bull Airsoft and we're here at the headquarters of Aries here in Hong Kong to have a perv at some of their stuff. Hi, hello again. Hi, hello again. This is Fangy, the marketing manager of Aries. So Fangy, we were wondering if you could help show us around that Aladdin scape of products yeah. we have here at all at the secret showroom here in Aries. Yes, sure. Fantastic. Let's go see that. Now we head into the inner sanctum of the showroom to get to the really good juicy parts. Wow, okay, so this is an Aries museum and there's way too much, to, I don't know where to start. Um, okay, so we'll focus on one gun at a time and take our time. So, ARs, Aries don't just do ARs, they do all of the ARs. Right, from the grandfathers and grandmothers right down to the brothers and sisters and, you know, illegitimate children in the redneck. Now, this is a replica of the original EDM Windrunner rifle, which was the original rifle which went on to become the M200 Shaytac intervention over there. This particular rifle is spring-powered for that sniper consistency, and they've actually made it out of a die-cast metal to help bring costs down. It's the M200 intervention. This particular model is made from precision-tooled CNC metal, which drives the price up a little bit, of course, but that does increase the build quality of this model. And this crazy little piglet in the corner is a literal hybrid. It's a mixture of the die cast parts from the Windrunner as well as the CNC parts from the M200. To be able to show that they are cross compatible, if you do have both, and parts, aftermarket parts, are compatible in both. And just because, you know, some people are into that hybrid fetish thing, so, you know, yeah. Of course, Ares L96s, which have been out a while, gas, bolt action sniper rifles, and a spring version available sometime soon. And then of course we have the WA-2000 because it's on the wall and I have to mention it even though it's quite old now. And the DSR for the exact same reason, because look at it, it's just so pretty. Now this is the MSR-001, which is not available yet, but it will be very, very, very soon. It is a gas-powered bolt-action sniper rifle, obviously. And later on, eventually, they're going to have this add-on, which is this crazy Frankenstein-looking folding adjustable stock thing, which you can add on just, you know, in case you want to show off. Next up, Ares M1A1 Thompson submachine gun, as well as the Chicago 1928 version. And you'll notice it's properly done because they haven't just changed the front. They've done the bolt and the top and everything, which is very, very cool. We have no idea when this is going to be released, but uh, Fanky over there informs me that this is a fully functioning product, which means hopefully we'll see it, you know, eventually. And here we have the Ares Spring Bolt Action SVDS which is the modern version of the SVD. This one here has a Chinese style PLA type scope on it, whereas the other one displayed over there has the original Russian Soviet one. Very cool. As well as a transparent body version for those countries that require it. And of course the SCARS, H in this case with the EGLM launcher, as well as the L with the EGLM launcher in both tan and black, they've been out a while now. And then, of course, we have the SR-25 in all its various incarnations as well, right up alongside the other M4s. Here we have a random assortment of Ares weapons, including their upcoming Sportline polymer weapons. But more importantly, I'm pointing out their gun rack system. It can be freestanding, or it can be clipped to the wall. And it has either direct clip-type mechanisms for holding them in place. And they've got this magazine clip system, as well as magazine-shaped fitters to attach weapons directly to the rail, which is very nice. Above it, we have here the BNT GL06 grenade launcher. Again, we don't know when it's going to come out, but sometime soon, hopefully. It's also a 203 launcher, but, you know, it's more tactical. And of course, the Ares L85 series. It's relatively old news now, but it's always nice to remember that Ares is the only brand, really, that stocks the entire family of the damn things, including the A2s and the LSWs and the short one and the grenade launching one. Out a long, long time ago was the M249 and M60s, which in themselves are very old news now. But more significantly, which we've been waiting for almost as long, is the LMG, which should be out very, very, very soon. And, yeah, it's an LMG. And then we have the Ares Grease Gun, the M3A1 submachine gun. 
This is actually an electric blowback version, which should be available very, 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 very soon. Electric blowback, extra cool. Oops. The Ares Tavor with the Mars sight and the short barrel, as well as the longer barrel versions with rail tops in three different colors, came out quite some time ago. However, the rail top short barrel in three different color versions are available, but they're not out yet. So let's just hope that someone gets their ass in here. And again, not actually news, but it's nice to be reminded that Ares has the complete family collection of the G36, including the original rifle version, as well as the K-length carbine and the C-length commander short thing, and the really fancy grenade launcher one here up at the top. And let's, of course, not forgetting the SL8 and 9s, and the similar one with the rail system, and now I'm running out of numbers, but the point is it's the long one, which is very pretty. What many people may not realize is that the brand shooter is Ares, which is how Ares gets out a lot of their extra aftermarket parts, including rail systems and barrels and magazines and pop-up units and flash hiders and grips and grenades and rail covers and, and that stuff and, you know, scopes and stocks and it, the list just goes on and on and on and on and on in its own little micro-museum gift shop in itself. never seen hit the market. The Ares boss decided to do this himself because, you know, they wanted to show off. It is a 40% size of a real size 1911 and they've replicated the parts right down to the smallest detail, which means it's a dummy prop magazine dummy shell feeding 1911 with full function. QC here at Ares means testing each and every single gun that comes through their factory, which is quite something. And they do it hands-on, not by machine, which means an actual chronograph and a crazy little dreadlock curtain at the end there to catch the BBs, and testing every single gun the way it's supposed to. So now that we have a bit of time to sit down and talk about the background of Ares, I thought I'd kick things off by asking, could you tell our viewers a little bit about the history of where Ares came from? Well, we have uh, been um, you know, in this business for about nine years, but Ares name, we just put on the market about four years. So we can see you know, what we got here. We've been busy, yes. Yeah. As I'm sure many Airsoft avid fans and potential start-up businesses would like to know, how did Ares actually start off? Well, it's really based on you know the founder, our CEO, and he loved guns, and he said he just wanted to make gun for himself to play with, and then that's how he started, and then become a business thing for him again. Now, of course, Ares might not be one of the oldest brands on the market, but uh, over the years, especially the last few, it's really exploded onto the scene. So do you think you could explain to our viewers there at home how you think Ares has succeeded so well where others have failed? Because we are the player, we love the guy. So we make so many different styles for them to play. I think that's how we, um, you know, how Ares want to be. We want to make gun for the player. And more recently, uh, the sub-brand Shooter popped up a few years ago, started selling accessories and magazines and parts. Uh, how do you see Shooter developing in the scope of Ares in the future? This is what we wanted to concentrate on as well. We want to, you know, all the player can upgrade their gun from, you know, especially Ares one, and with our accessory, and then you'll be like, you can customize it, you can personalize or all your gun. So we will definitely concentrate on this area as well. So now as we draw this little interview to a close, are there any final messages you want to leave for the viewers at home? And I will take this opportunity to thank our supporter. You know, hopefully you keep supporting us and we'll be more innovative and have more guns out. Well, thank you, Faggy. It's been a pleasure, especially having a perv around your enclave. And with all the countless dozens of things coming out over the next year or so, keep an eye out for all the new Ares guns and shooter stuff coming out in the next few months.